Hey, what's up? My name is John, but people on the internet call me Narwhal, and I'm in the midst of a challenge right now where I'm watching every single superhero movie ever made in order because I had never seen them. Today, we're here to talk about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So here's my question. How has nobody ever over the years seen Peter Parker swing into his own bedroom window? Because clearly he doesn't go in and out the front door because his aunt and uncle would catch well, not his uncle because, you know, you know. <laughs> but how does nobody ever catch Peter Parker flying through the air? Like, it's got to be kind of loud. I mean, I would imagine if it's, you know, 1 a.m. And you just hear, <laughs> that was supposed to be the sound of his web connecting to like a building and then and the suction sound, you know? I don't know, you know, you gotta suspend your disbelief, I guess, but I'm just sitting there thinking like, man, that's gotta be loud. Another thing that made no sense to me is how the villain is sick in the same way that his father was sick because the son clearly was born before his father turned himself into the lizard thing. So how is he genetically predisposed to that? You know what I'm saying? Like if the son was fucking 10 years old or whatever, and then the dad injected himself i don't understand how the sun could genetically get that same thing maybe i missed something and i have not researched this movie very much it wasn't the worst thing in the world but compared to how much i enjoyed the first one this one was just eh. i'm normally not one to pay a ton of attention to the soundtrack of movies but recently i've been trying to force myself to pay way more attention to the sound design and to the music choices and for whatever reason the music in this movie did not work for me at all oh i just so many things about this movie annoy me. I really didn't like the writing, and that's something I enjoyed a lot about the first one, was the writing felt very real and just, I don't know, not annoying. And in this movie, Electro has a line that says, It's my birthday. Now it's time for me to light my candles. Sick. It's so dumb to me like these these little things these are the things that just piss me off and just turn me away from movies like this it's like why would they say why would anyone say that and i know he's like a super villain so you know he's different he's got says some wild shit and he doesn't make the smartest decisions because he's a dumb villain okay but it's just so stupid to me like this is the shit that just annoys me because i imagine writers sitting together in a room like, this is what happened. When I heard that scene, I just envision a bunch of writers in Hollywood sitting in a room and they're like, it's my birthday. Now it's time to light my candles. And then all of them like high five each other because that's such a witty, clever, cool line for a villain to say. I get more annoyed by the fact that someone wrote that thinking it would sound good and that people don't think that's annoying than the actual line itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get more annoyed that we've just accepted that Electro would say that. And maybe he would, you know, I've never met the guy. Maybe Electro is into having these dramatic pauses and really corny lines. But if Electro said that to me, I'd be like, dude, you're a bitch. Like what? Not that lighting birthday candles for yourself makes you a bitch. Like by all means, I want to blow out some candles on my birthday too. But there's a time and a place to talk about your birthday candles. I just need to cool down. It's gonna be okay. However, shout out to the casting team because whoever the actor is that plays Harry looks exactly how I would picture the son of like a rich billionaire. That's always something that I think is underrated that people should, you know, uh, try and appreciate more is when someone does a really good job of casting a character where you're like, damn, I read this book and that character looks exactly how I imagine them looking in my head. Now I'm all for movies that are slower and focus more on character development and little nuances of their life and them as a person. I love movies like that, but something that I did not enjoy about this movie is that there was just not enough Spider-Man doing Spider-Man stuff. I had a similar critique to Superman Returns is that the 2006 Superman? The Superman scenes were dope, but there just wasn't very many of them. And I feel the same way about this movie. Like, I think if they had twice as many Spider-Man-y scenes, the movie would have been way better. There just wasn't enough cool swinging around the city and... And from what I saw and could gather, the only motivation for Electro at all is that he wants to be needed. They kind of beat that into the ground. They're like, oh, he wants to be needed. Oh, you need me. Oh, I just want to be needed. Oh, no one ever needs me. I want to be needed. I'm like, dude, first of all, I get it. Second of all, you don't get to see or hear anything about Electro's backstory as to why he wants to be needed so bad. Like, I don't know anything about Electro at all. Electro is like the goofiest dude ever. Like, all he wants is to be needed, and then one person and says, oh, bro, I need you. And then he's like down to commit his whole life to you. He's like, give me one reason why I should trust you. And then someone responds and goes, I need you. And he's like, 
Oh, okay, dope. Yeah, yeah, sure, for sure. What, what do you need? Andrew Garfield was also 30 years old in this movie. You know, there's been worse. There's been movies where like 30 year olds play high school kids, but you know, it's just very noticeable and it's just not the best. And I was really sad when Gwen died. I know that like when a character you like dies, that's not a fair critique of the show. And also I haven't even watched the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, whatever that new Marvel show is. I might watch it at the end of all the movies, but but I obviously need the context of the MCU first. But from what I've read, there's like dumb people that are going after one of the actors who plays a character in that show that they don't like. And they're going after the actor on like his personal accounts as if he is the character that he played and that he just is a piece of shit. People are so dumb sometimes. There's so many times where I've heard someone say, oh, I didn't like that movie because that character was a bitch or that, that character sucked. I hated that movie. And I'm like, that was the whole point. You're supposed to hate them. That's amazing. That means the actor did their job. That means the writing's good. That means they got you invested to hate them. That's the point. So when there's people that go after actors as if the actor is this character, you are such an idiot. And it's so sad too, because I'm sure this actor is probably a nice guy. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe years down the road, there'll be something going out where he just was a horrible person because that's happened plenty of times in the last couple of years. But this dude just got a dream role probably. You know, he was super happy to finally be in a big show. He's making some good money now and he does amazing. And then he gets on Twitter and everyone's telling him he's a fucking asshole. I don't know. I mean, I haven't even seen the show, but all of that to say, I was very sad when Gwen died, but that didn't affect my feelings towards the movie. You know what I'm saying? Cause I can separate the two. Like that was a crucial part of the storyline for Gwen to die and that was actually a really you know intense scene like that was probably one of my favorite scenes of the movie was when she actually died but I just really love Emma Stone and it you know I had an internal tear shed and I said it in the last video I think but oh my god how does Peter Parker not have PTSD because this guy witnesses everybody that's ever close to him die. It's just such a traumatic life. Like his dad, his uncle, his girlfriend, tons of other people he's probably seen die too. I don't know. Prayers up to you, Peter. You should probably go see a therapist or something. Or Peter, just get a whole bunch of apple juice and you'll be feeling just fine. Just kidding. Talk it out. Don't drink away your emotions. The last thing I have to say about this movie is dear God, Paul Giamatti's accent is so bad. It always blows my mind when there's a really, really bad accent in a huge movie like this, because it's just like they filmed that and the director and the whole team was like, yup, let's use it. Why? You have hundreds of millions of dollars probably at your disposal. You have a world-class actor here and you just, I don't know, like it just feels like they did it once and they're like, oh yeah, sounds good. I don't know, maybe his accent was exactly what it was supposed to sound like, but to me it sounded terrible. And from what I heard from you guys, the reason that they introduced this like new villain in the last 10 minutes of the movie is because there was supposed to be a third movie, but I think people hated this movie so much that the third one never got made. So there you go. Uh, thank you all so much for watching this review. I rated it a five out of 10 on TikTok and I'm gonna stick with that. You know, looking back on it, and just how annoyed I got from this review. I might bump it down to a four, but regardless, let me know what you guys thought of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 in the comments down below. If you guys are new around here, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And if you like me and want more content, be sure to check out my podcast called Peak to Middle School. There's two episodes every single week with full video versions on YouTube. All of that is linked down below and I think you guys would really enjoy it. I still stand by that no one eats actual oranges. And if you say you eat an orange, you're a liar because no one eats oranges. My sister. She, no one Full eats. real oranges. Yeah. She had them at her place in Madrid. That's why I had an orange. But did I you ever see her eat one? Or were they just there and she told you she ate them? You know but what? you never got visible, <laughs> visible evidence. You know what? She she just gave me an orange. So she might have just had it. <laughs> That's I did, I what I'm actually, saying. Didn't actually see her eat the orange. I think, it's a, I think oranges might be aliens. No, I've also seen her eat upwards of a thousand oranges probably in my life oh, so well. she I, no one eats oranges like her anyway thank you all so much for the continued support it's awesome to see this channel grow i'm gonna go watch hellboy peace